Hello and welcome back to everybody in this particular session where we are going to talk about optimizations in Databricks. We are going to talk about how we can do performance tuning in Databricks. So we have already discussed that you guys can connect with me on TopMate. You can check out my website. You can connect with me on LinkedIn as well as do check out my YouTube channel as well. So now as part of our previous sessions, we have discussed about the application performance and the general optimizations we can do. We have checked out how we can do multiple application performance, how we can, you know, um, enhance the performance using the general optimization techniques, which is stable optimization and cluster tuning. We have also discussed on the Spark architecture. We have also checked the Spark UI simulator. We have also gone through the five most common problems with the application that we can enhance, right? And how one problem can be caused by another. So we have already discussed this. So in this particular video, we are going to discuss the skew, which is nothing but imbalance in the size of partitions. So now when we talk about skew, what is exactly skew? Skew is nothing but whenever you are transferring the data. So let's say again, I'll give the same example, which I've given in my previous video. So now let's say you have 100 rows of data, right? 99 rows belongs to the location USA and one row belongs to the location Australia. Now you have partitioned the data based on location. So what will happen? All the USA related information will go in the one folder and all the Australia related information will go in one folder. But the problem is 99 rows have gone to one and one row has gone to one another folder. So now when the processing happen, all the 99 rows are grouped together and, and it's sent to one machine while the one record of Australia is grouped together, it, it's just the one row and it is sent to another machine. Now it's processing in parallel. Now one machine will work will be done very fast. It will be ideal for some time while the 99 rows are still processing or it might happen that might also create a problem, right? That is a skew problem. And at the same time, if your machine does not have that much of uh, capacity, it can spill also. That's the second issue. So the first issue is the skewness and the skewness is what your one task is taking a lot of time because one task has got more data due to the skewness. So that is what your skewness is all about as the data is transformed. Now it can happen at any time, not just because of partition. Even when you're filtering the data, when you're put to putting a join anytime as the data is transformed, for example, when you're filtering the data, it's possible to have significantly more records in one partition than another. That is what your data skewness is all about. Similarly, the data is normally, you know, normally in Spark data is typically read as 128 MB partitioned partitions and it's evenly distributed and it is evenly distributed and this is controlled by the spark configuration spark.sql.file max partition bytes and spark.sql files dot open cost in bytes. So using these two settings, using these two spark configurations, right? You can control the partitions as well as how evenly they are distributed. You can control both of them. And at the same time, data skewness can also be created with the join conditions, right? So you have put something like uh, join these two tables on this. Now this join condition has resulted in data skewness, right? Large queues can result in spill so that we have already talked about. Now large, it's Q, it's not Q, it's S-K-E-W. I will correct that spelling, spelling over here. Large queues can also cause a spill because your uh, worker node might not have that much memory right that might that uh, might not have memory so it might cause spill errors as well and then how to identify a data skewness right so data skewness the first thing is you have to analyze the data right you have to check out your data at every step when you are doing the development you have to check out your data that your data should not be skewed and at the same time you also have to check the task duration so when you're running your code and your code at a particular step is taking a lot of time, right? Then you have to go and check what is the problem at that particular task where it is taking so much of time. Now we will go to Databricks Spark UI Simulator to understand the data skewness, right? So now you can see 
it says Q join, right? So here, if you look at this particular notebook, I would like you guys to go through this notebook as well, right? So now the very first thing is they are actually telling you the um, cluster configurations over here, right? And after that, you can see uh, shuffle partitions are being decided. So don't worry about these settings right now. Okay, so you will eventually learn about all of this. So right now you can see what's happening. Two files are being read over here, right? So you uh, two delta path is being defined over here. Now here you can see in the visual DF that particular delta is being read, right? Spark dot read dot format delta and load the transaction path group by city ID. Now they are grouping by city ID. Count and then order by count. Now remember, remember what is happening. Group by city ID is happening here. Okay. And then a count is happening on top of it. Right. First what is happening? It is reading the file. And then it is grouping it based on the city ID. Right. And then now you can see the job has been created. Inside the job you can see that stages has been created. Now you can see this particular data frame. Now this is how the data is looks, how the data looks like. Now it's grouped by city ID. So now if I look at the data, right, you have the city ID over here and then you have count of the records. So now you can see the city ID has 23 million count and this these city IDs has less than or around 8 million records. So do you look at the data skewness? This particular ID has 23 million records and these ones have just 8 million so data is skewed data is highly skewed right so now again try to understand what is happening again i'm doing a join over here so now i now what is happening i am reading city path and a transaction path two like the, these are the two paths right that is defined at the top city path and a transaction path so in each city some transactions are happening that data is there so first of all this is just to show you the data right how skewed the data is in the in in what it is it is in the transaction file in the transaction file the data is skewed then here I am reading both city as well as transaction okay I am reading both city as well as transaction and then I am doing transaction dot join city I am joining these two based on city ID now remember one data is already skewed right and and then I'm writing it and I'm then writing it as a table right as, just as a test right now you can see slowly what is happening again jobs got created and then the stages got created okay now if I proceed a bit over here okay here what I have done I have said spark dot read dot format delta dot load transaction path because this file was skewed. Now I am saying dot hint skew city ID. So I'm already hinting that hey the city ID is skewed. So this is called providing hints. Right? So now you can see this comment as well. It is required to avoid executor out of memory or spill. It is required to avoid executor out of memory or spill so that is what the hint is all about right and then let's look at the next step right so now here if you look at I am not using hint the same code is there it's the same code but then the only change is there is no hint over here and then adaptive query execution has been turned on so right now by default in the higher run times adaptive query execution is enabled but if you want to manually enable it, you can check this spark.sql.adaptive.enable true and spark.sql.adaptive.skewed.join.enable true. So you're enabling these two configurations, right? You are already enabling this configuration. Now, when you are enabling these configurations, what is happening? By default, Spark knows that, hey, skew join, it can be a skew join. So I have to adapt my query in such a way that there is less of skewness, right? So now that is why you don't need a hint. So you need a hint when adaptive query execution is not enabled. If adaptive query execution is enabled, then you don't need a hint, right? Now similarly, if I come down, I can also use salted skew. So when I say salted skew, 
so you can see over here now is it now i'll come to this as well this is the resolutions these are all the resolution you don't you should avoid using salting so in the salting here over here you can see that uh, it has a salt factor which is 7 which is converted into a data frame you can see the data frame is nothing but it's a big int which is a value of 7 so we are using this 7 to salt the data so now when i say salt the data so you can see in the next step what exactly is doing first we are just defining a value of 7 right and after within the data frame and then what i'm saying spark.read.format delta load city path repartition i'm partitioning the data based on a random number so you can see over here you can see the partitioning over here and then dot cross join on the salted df dot cross join that is nothing but that is a 7 right and then we are creating a new column which is salted id and we are saying city id is concatenated with the salt so now when you do this what is actually going to happen so when you do this your city id value gets a salt it gets changed if you look in the output data frame over here you have city id city state state abbreviation country and the salted city id now we are going to use the salted city id to do the join so now if i come over here in the similar way even the transaction data in the same way it is salted in the same way exactly what we have seen it's salted and then in the next step you can see we are joining the both the data frames using the salted city id right now this can also help you to reduce the data skewness because now the city id has been changed in such a way that now it will take a lot of experiments to load all the same city ids in one partition it is not going to load all the uh, same party ids in one partition so that is how it helps in the skewness as well and this is what your simulator is all about and if you want to look at the cluster you know what cluster configurations was it using it was using databricks runtime version 7 which is like very old so now you can see over here what kind of worker types and how many workers how many cores what was the memory that it was using so i'll go back to my ppt over here so now we have already seen the spark ui simulator on how these things can be done now when you talk about the resolutions you have already seen some resolution as well so you can see increasing the ram so now when you say skewness let's say the data is more in one particular partition and then your one particular executor got a lot of data so now you can increase the size of that particular executor and you can simply say that okay it will process fast now right it might be a quick solution but then it is going to give you a lot of cost and your job is still not optimized there's no guarantee that your increased ram will be always working right so now what you can do you can use skew hints that we talked about you have just seen the skew hint right that we gave during the join condition similarly you can also enable adaptive query execution so when i say adaptive query execution it is enabled by default in the higher run times right and that is also preferred and very easy because databricks automatically ensures that you uh, when you have adaptive query execution and you have adaptive query execution for the SKU joins both enabled it makes sure that your it already understands that okay your data can be skewed and it tries to resolve it on its own right and similarly you have already seen right uh, when you enable adaptive query skew joins you have already seen these two configurations in the spark ui right now uh, in the notebook right now that spark.sql.adaptive skewed join enabled the moment you have set that to true it means that in the adaptive query it knows that okay you know uh, the that my joins will be skewed joins so please take care of it similarly if you want to have certain size of partition you can define it by the second configuration as well you can use salted joins as well that we have seen but use it only if the options are not working the above options are not working right because what is happening is you are just adding a random number to your um, you know id column which is used in the join is just a random number so there is no guarantee that the distribution will be better using the salting so that is what your skew is all about so stay tuned for the next session of spill